Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Now, a while ago I started doing some asset review videos. I want to showcase some assets, see what they do, how to start using them, and whether or not they are worth it. I'm making that series mainly with paid assets, so you know something is worth it or not before you buy it. For free assets, usually you can just try them out yourself, but there are lots of awesome free assets that you might not even know about, so I want to cover a bunch of those as well. Case in point, here is the awesome Viking Village, which is completely free. This is officially made by Unity. It was actually released a long time ago during the Unity 5 days all the way back in 2015 and now they've updated it to work with URP so it works perfectly with the latest Unity version. It's a very very good looking scene, you've got lots of props, buildings, water, vegetation, mountains and so on. It uses a bunch of Unity tools and features to make it look great and since it's made in URP that means that this is representative of what you can get on any Unity platform. So you can run this exact same scene on PC or mobile or console. Now before we see it in action, do you want to learn how to make games from a veteran in the games industry? Then check out this video's sponsor, Jason Wyman, who makes some great game development courses. They are all extremely detailed and very well planned, with expert life support from Jason himself whenever you need help. As a special deal, you can get the CodeMonkey bundle, which includes not one, but four courses, all for the price of one. The latest course that was just added as a free update to the bundle is the Game Architecture course. It will teach you all of the essentials to successfully build a large-scale game through the process of building your own full-scale RPG. So you will learn all about inventory, crafting, stats and quest systems, learn about customizable AI, character leveling, progression and tons more. On top of that, it also teaches you project planning and how to successfully follow a process from start to finish when making a game. The other included course are the Programmer course where you'll learn all about C-sharp, then master Unity along with all of its tools, and finally dive deep into code architecture. Also as a bonus, if you pick up the CodeMonkey bundle through the link, you get Steam keys for all of my games as a nice free bonus along with a mug, hoodie, and discount on future courses. So if you want to learn how to make games, check the link in the description. Alright, so I've got the demo scene loaded here. I'm using Unity 2020 LTS with URP, and as you can see, I've got a GeForce 980 and it's running at a very nice, very smooth 60 frames per second. Playing the scene takes this camera and moves it through the village. So as you see, you've got lots of good looking houses, some fire, water, some gorgeous sky and lighting. I think what this demo shows best is really the use of lighting. So this lighting with the sun setting looks really gorgeous. The skybox itself is excellent with all of those really nice clouds. So this whole thing is a mixture of real time lighting mixed with some baked lighting. There's a bunch more houses, some really good looking fire particle effects. And the water itself also looks really good, as well as the terrain in the background. So I have to say that I've been watching the TV show Viking, so playing through this scene really makes me want to build something with these assets. This is the perfect starting point for making any kind of realistic medieval game. And by the way, the scene also includes a first person controller. It's over here on the hierarchy under the camera's game object. So you've got the camera loop, which is the one that we saw. It simply plays an animation going through the scene. And then you've got the flying rigid body FPS controller. Now one note here which is for some reason when I imported the package there was an error on this FPS camera. For some reason inside this camera over here it has two universal additional camera data scripts. And for some reason this breaks the whole thing and for some reason there's no way to remove this one. So that's a strange bug but a simple fix is simply to find this one on the project files and just drag it in and I've got this one that I dragged in. And then you can hit play and now everything works perfectly. All right, so here I can now walk around and go through this scene. I can sprint, so it's a pretty basic FPS controller. And as you can see, the scene looks really great. So look at that tower, look at the sun, looks really good. All of these assets, everything looks pretty great. So over here I'm playing this as if it was something like Skyrim. Okay, so let's inspect everything. Over here in the editor, let's see how this whole thing is set up. And right away you see the whole village. It's actually a pretty decent size, and again, this whole thing is on a free asset pack, so that's always awesome. So you can see the content, all of these meshes. Then the other thing you see is tons and tons of reflection probes. So look at all of those dots. Those are all various reflection probes. Then you also have got tons of light probes, as well as a bunch of lights. And again, one of the main benefits with looking at these asset packs made by Unity themselves is to see how the tools are used by the Unity team itself. So it's always great to inspect the scene and see exactly where they place all of these light probes, how they should, why they do that, and so on. Then, as you can see, there's also a really gorgeous sunset. Look at that, really nice. And by the way, just in case you don't know where you modify the skybox, you go into Window, then down here into Rendering, and open up the Lighting window. And in here, if you click on the Environment tab, yep, you've got a field for the skybox material. 
and if you click on it it shows you where it is on the project files so for example if i remove it and i change it for the default skybox you have a look at that that's the default skybox which by itself already looks pretty good but then you've got this one and looks much better so again the files are all here so feel free to use this skybox in your own games now one of the main things about this demo is over here the water so this one is actually the exact same one that was using the boat attack demo so it's some really good looking water and it's very adaptable in fact this whole thing is actually a plane so if you find the water over here on the hierarchy so this is just a plane so if for example you want to flood the whole village just move it upwards and you look at that everything looks great so there you go now the village is all of a sudden submerged in water so this is a really adaptable shader now by itself if you select the water object over here on the inspector you can see it uses the water script with all of these tons and tons of parameters so I really need to take some time to really dig deep into this and figure out how this whole thing works. So if you want to learn, feel free to dig into it yourself. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Then the demo also has quite a bunch of vegetation, as you can see here. Now, this one is taken from the Book of Dead demo. Now, all of these bushes are very performant with several LEDs, and also they sway with the wind. Another interesting thing about this demo is, like I said, this asset pack was originally made ages ago in 2015 and it was made for the built-in render pipeline and now it has been updated to work with URP. So for that, the Unity devs went ahead and they had to convert all the materials from the built-in render pipeline to URP and they used ShaderGraph to do that. So you can see over here the materials, they're using the shader. And again, since the shaders were made in ShaderGraph, they are always editable. So you can just edit and visualize and see how this whole thing works. So for example, over here on the grass shader, you've got up here the wind direction, the strength, and so on. So if you want to learn how that works, just take some time and study up this section. Then another thing is over here, the scene uses this. It's a wind zone. Now I have to say, I've never used this component, so I'm not entirely sure what this does. And the other thing the scene also uses is over here, the occlusion area. Again, I've also never used this one, so no idea what this does. So that's a great example of, like I always say, game dev is a never ending learning journey. So as you can see, I still have quite a lot to learn myself. Another interesting thing is to note how they optimize the terrain. So this demo is primarily all about the village. So the terrain back here is really just meant for set dressing. And what they did is they made this really nice and optimized by making sure that the terrain that is near the village. So if I click on this and I select it, yep, there you go, this whole thing is one terrain, the terrain near. And as you can see, it's relatively small, so the whole terrain is pretty high resolution. So if you move the camera, you can see, yep, all the textures down there, they are pretty high resolution. However, if you go through here and go outside, and all of a sudden you can see this terrain on the outside, yep, look at that difference. The difference in the resolution between this one and that one. And if you select this one, you can see that this one is much, much bigger. So that one is just that small thing, whereas this one occupies that whole background area. Note also over here the difference on the scale in the light map. So for the one that is far away, it's on a tiny value, whereas for the one that is near, that one actually has a good scale in the light map. So this is made so that it doesn't occupy too much memory and too many textures. So as you can see on the lighting, this whole thing, if you go onto the baked light maps, you can see just a handful of them. Whereas if this terrain was using some super high resolution, you would end up with tons, tons more of light maps. So these are all examples of the various tricks that you can do to make your game look really gorgeous while still being quite performant. So again, this whole village, it's pretty gorgeous. And if you are right here in the middle, you don't see how that mountain in the background is quite low resolution because from this distance, it doesn't really matter. So again, that makes the whole thing look really gorgeous whilst being very performant. Another interesting thing on this demo are the volumes here. So this little green box, this is a volume. Now, if I play the game with the first person control, you can see it in action. All right, so here I am with my first person controller and as you can see the scene still looks gorgeous and over here are the docks and as I jump in Yep, there you go as you can see the post-processing changed So as I'm inside this area, which is quite a bit darker it raised the exposure so I can see quite a bit better So if you didn't know about it, then this is an awesome thing that you can do with post-processing volumes You can make them act on a certain distance then over here. You can also increase the blend distance so this is to make it nicely, smoothly interpolate. And you can change everything. So for example, over here, mainly just changing the exposure. And there's another one over here. There's a really dark house, so you can barely see. So as soon as you go in, just raise the exposure, just so you can see a little bit better. Also, by the way, it also works with the scene camera. So if you hold down the right mouse button, you can then use W, A, S, and D to move the camera. 
and you can go inside and it automatically shows the difference. So inside and outside and so on. So this is demo scene, which as you can see has tons of interesting things. But of course, this is also a complete asset back. So you can browse around the project files and over here you can see all kinds of things. So you can expand the prefabs and over here you've got all kinds of buildings. And down here, all kinds of props. So look at that, if you need a bunch of boulders, a bunch of fences, a log pile, a bunch of stumps, a bunch of planks, and so on. So you can take any of these assets and use them in your own games. Okay, so that's the Viking Village working in the latest Unity version with URP. It's free, so go ahead and pick it up from the asset store. I've been wanting to convert my house building system to work in first or third person, so maybe I'll use these assets to try to do that. So go ahead and get the asset pack yourself and explore your own ideas. Also, don't forget to check out the CodeMonkey bundle in the description, learn how to make games, and as a bonus, you also get Steam keys for all of my games. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.